Like everything, bioinformatics has its own language that you have to get used to. There are a few terms that come up while we're talking about genome sequencing and genome annotation, and I just want to review them so that we're on the same page. The first one is open reading frame. An open reading frame is basically a stretch of DNA that can be translated, so converted to proteins, without a stop codon. As we'll see when we look at open reading frame translations, basically what this means is it's just a lot of A's, T's, G's, and C's without one of the stop codons in it. Open reading frames don't mean that they're actually functional, don't mean that they're made into anything. It's just a kind of a hypothetical thing that exists. Once we've got an open reading frame, we can identify coding sequences that are sometimes called CDS. And a more specific version of CDS is the PEG, or protein encoding gene. A coding sequence could be an RNA or a tRNA, but a protein encoding gene specifically means that it encodes proteins and not RNAs or tRNAs. And so these are regions of the genome that are actively transcribed and potentially, but not always, translated. So protein encoding genes are translated. RNAs, obviously, are not translated. Uh, we talk about hypothetical or perhaps putative proteins. And this is a phrase that drives everybody quite crazy. Basically, what this means is that we've got a protein encoding gene, but it has not, not been experimentally proven. So if we have a hypothetical function, it may be a hypothetical unknown function, so we think it exists, but we don't know. Or it may be a hypothetical function where we actually think we know what the function is, but because we haven't experimentally proven it, we've still de decided to give it the word putative or hypothetical. In most modern genome annotation, we're trying to move away from using hypothetical and putative when we think genes are really doing the function, um, even though we haven't actually experimentally proven it. We're never going to be able to experimentally test every protein. And if we're convinced, if there's enough evidence that indicates that this protein is doing that function, why do we need to give it the moniker putative or hypothetical? And then the last one that comes up frequently that I just want to mention is polypeptide. And a polypeptide is a stretch of somewhere typically between 20 and 100, but this is really, the, there's no hard and fast rule here, of consecutive amino acids. So there's a connection between all of these things. An open reading frame is a stretch of DNA that could potentially encode a coding sequence or a putative, uh, excuse me, or a protein encoding gene. If you have a short open reading frame, it might encode a polypeptide. A polypeptide can also be part of a protein encoding gene or a coding sequence, just a region of it, perhaps a domain or an area that's involved in interacting with in some way. 